If you don't respect the mechanism of happiness and fulfillment and what you really need to do in order to feel satisfied in life, camaraderie, love, family, friendship, struggle, testing yourself, learning, all those things are imperative. They're all a giant part of being a person. Well, I, what's fascinating to me is that you're saying that they're so happy because if you get a ran, I mean, how many, how many people are in this monastery? Uh, eight. And they're all male? Yes. Eight men. If you get eight random men in their, you know, what's the youngest age of the guys? Are there? 35. 35 yeah. up to 70 is. You get eight random 35 to 70 and ask how many of them are happy, actually truly happy. Maybe two, right? How many people do you think are happy? Well, they just did a study. There's a famous Harris study on happiness in this country. I think 67% uh, of the people are unhappy. I think a lot of what happiness is is a management issue. And decisions that you're making right now, like you could be in a shit state of mind right now, but you could make some decisions to adjust that. And over the next couple hours, you'll get to a much better place. And these constant management decisions, they waver in and out of your life on a daily basis. Like this idea that you could have a good mindset, and then all of a sudden you'll be happy. That's horseshit. Like it's, that's like, it's like the tide. It comes in and it comes out. And there's going to be days where you're just not feeling so good physically, and that's going to affect the way your happiness level is. It's never static. It's never the, exactly the same. This is something I've cultivated for a long time and avoided things that make me unhappy and figured out what those things are and been very rigid about eliminating them from, from my life. And one of the big ones is eliminating interactions with people that are negative. That is gigantic. And be, because I've realized that I'm not really as independent as I used to like to think I was, I used to like to think that my thought process was independent and that I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. That's nonsense. People say that because they absolutely care what people think and it bothers them. So they say, I don't give a fuck. But that I don't give a fuck stuff is almost entirely nonsense. You do care. And you care in both ways. You care if people are critical of you, you care if people are positive of you, but you also care if people are living positive lives and they're motivating you. That's, that's a big one. People are fuel and other people, it's one of the reasons why I like talking to people. One of the reasons why I like to do podcasts because I get a lot out of, you know, like just talking to you about your time in the monastery or your, your push to get to that hundred miles. Like you get energy out of people like that. And you think about this energy and you think about this inspiration when you're doing other things. And it also sets in your mind that when you meet these exceptional people that move you, like what are the characters? What are the qualities that they have? What are the characteristics that they that they possess? And those things become significant and important to you. Whereas if you live around a bunch of people that are complaining and bitching about everything and they see the negative in everything and they're always whining, those people are the opposite of that. They're the opposite of inspiration. And they're, they're just, they're, they're mud. And you're just like, Bleh. it's like you're up to your ankles in mud. You try to trudge through life. It's difficult. You're not light. It's not, it's not pushing you. There's not a wind at your back. The wind's in your face and it's rough, you know? And over time, I've learned that these people, you just, you, you're not going to fix them. I used to want to fix them when I was young. I used to want to go, hey man, I see what you're doing. Like, dude, don't do that anymore. Listen, just try, just, just do this and, and stop doing that and start doing this. And if you just work towards this, you could be successful. And then a week later, the guy's doing the same shit. You're like, okay, right. I'm wasting a significant amount of my energy on someone who doesn't want to waste any of their energy on themselves. And so managing the, the community and the tribe that you're in, making sure that you're a good member of that tribe, that you're doing your part, you know, and there's a lot of uh, cynicism in these days about uh, inspiration and about motivation because there's a lot of fake shit. You know, you can go on Instagram and you see a million of these inspirational quote pages and they're run by people that are probably depressed. You know, you see a lot of people that are, you know, talking about how to get ahead in life, but they're not really doing anything themselves. So there's a lot of cynicism involved in that. But there's also sincerity in it and you can get if you just look at it with a pure heart and a pure mind you can get a lot of energy out of that and when you're around happy 
inspirational people that are successful, it makes you feel better and you get inspired. And if you act on that inspiration, your life will be more fulfilled. And it's not just inspirational in terms of financial success, but in terms of doing difficult things, whether it's running a hundred miles, it doesn't pay you a goddamn thing other than the, 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 the wealth of the knowledge that you can push yourself to such an extreme or anything else, whether it's someone who becomes really good at playing chess or someone who's really good at martial arts or, or whatever it is, there's, there's a great feeling in these overcoming these difficult things because life is never this just constant state of, I'm at a nine all day and when I'm with my wife, I hit 10, yay, and I stay like that. That's not real. What's real is like you saying that you went to this monastery and felt all this this angst about meditating and being alone and not having your phone and not having the input but then when it comes out of it then you have this reward so you you push through this and you had these uncomfortable feelings and you came out of those uncomfortable feelings with this newfound appreciation for time and this newfound this respect for your own existence in your own space and carving out three hours for yourself a day. That's where it all comes from. It all comes from life lessons and the lessons are learned through struggle. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that think somehow or another you're going to get to some place where you're living in silk sheets and you're getting your toes done while someone's dropping grapes into your mouth. I don't want that. I've never wanted that. You, that guy's not going to be happy. He's going to be bored. An hour into the grapes, you're going to get those fucking grapes away from me. Stop painting my toes. What am I doing in this bed? I got to do something. I'm not stimulated. The human organism, the animal that we are, needs constant stimulation because it evolved trying to find food and escape enemies and find shelter, escape nature, escape the elements, try to survive. And this is the great joy that you have in taking care of your children, that you can protect your children from the elements and the enemies and feed them. And, and it's also the great sadness that you see in losers. When I see a loser, I see some guy who's 43 years old, lives in his parents' basement, and he fucking hates the world. I'm like, that was a baby. Man, this is a baby that somebody just gave shitty nutrients to, whether it's f nutrients in the forms of food or in the form of thoughts and ideas and examples. And this kid developed these horrible, self-defeating patterns of behavior that have led them to this point where they're this, this middle-aged person with no future and no idea of how to get out of this rut and probably never will escape it and might just wind up sucking on a gun. You know, I mean, this is this is the world that we live in today. And I think part of that world is because we have been fed this line of horseshit that you're supposed to seek comfort. And I don't think you are. I think you're supposed to seek lessons and you're supposed to seek difficult tasks and and and, and, and accomplishments. And through those things and through doing things that are hard to do, even if it's just a fucking 90 minute hot yoga class. I do a 90 minute yoga class, man. I, those last 20 minutes, I do not want to be there, man. And I definitely don't want to give 100%. And I can cheat. I can I could kind of half ass it. I can I can but if I don't and I get through it, when that time is up and the lady says namaste and everybody gets up, I'm like, "Fuck, man. I made it." You know, I lost 15 pounds. My fucking yoga mat is drenched to the point where I could literally wring it out and fill a, a, a jug up with water. But through that struggle, I will now have a better day and I better fucking do it again tomorrow or do something else. Because if I just think, well, tomorrow I'm just going to coast and eat Twinkies and watch TV. Oh, hello, sadness, my old friend. Hello, depression. Because when you're not doing anything, you feel like shit. And that's just part of being a human being. And we can pretend that we're something other than what we really are. And we can pretend, nah, me, man, I'm just cool, just chilling, doing nothing. Bullshit. You're a fucking human. You're a human being. You're, you evolved from the fucking hundreds of thousands of years of hunters and gatherers and people that were struggling. Those re human reward systems are carved deeply into your DNA. And if you don't respect that, if you don't respect the mechanism of happiness and fulfillment and what you really need to do in order to feel satisfied in life, camaraderie, love, family, friendship, struggle, testing yourself, learning, all those things are imperative. They're all a giant part of being a person.